Hey folks, this is Kalani. The latest Dragonflight Alpha build introduced some rather interesting new options that change how you can play World of Warcraft. We will be able to auto-cast spells repeatedly, automatically target nearby monsters, and even interact with NPCs and objects in the world without ever having to use your mouse. Now they are very early in their iteration, and this is the first time we're seeing them on the Alpha itself, so I imagine they are going to be a little buggy sometimes, and maybe a little bit incomplete, but they do have some great potential. So let's go over these new options, what they are, how they work, and how they can give you a new way to play World of Warcraft. Before we jump in, be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. Okay, so what are some of these new options and how can they change how you play WoW? There are actually a few added in this latest alpha build and they are definitely very early on in development or at least implementation. So early in fact that some of them don't even have a place in the options to turn them on or off or change how they work, so we're working with pure console commands for some of these features, which tells you just how new they are. The first one is press and hold casting. This one is pretty simple and straightforward. If you enable this setting, you can hold down a key and the game will repeatedly cast that spell over and over and over again as long as you are holding down your keybind. This is mostly going to be useful for anyone with rotations or play styles where you spam the same spell over and over, like maybe a bear druid with their thrash during berserk, a demon hunter's chaos strike spam, or really any caster with their filler spells. You know, the warlocks with the shadow bolts or incinerates, mages with arcane blast, fireball, or frostball. You know, anything where you're literally just spamming the same button over and over again until something else comes off cooldown, until you get enough of your resources, or until you get a proc. This can be used instead of spamming that button, so you can just hold the button down. Now apparently this will not work with mouse clicks, so you can't just click on your bar and hold a spell down. It only works with a key bound spell, so it is for keyboard users only I'm afraid, to all the clickers out there, and it will also not work with macros, so you can't hold down a key bind that is tied to a macro to have that macro repeat over and over, so there are still some limitations here. Most of them are probably due to how the tech works or just not wanting to let you exploit it too much. Allowing you to repeat macros could get kind of messy seeing as macros are capable of doing quite a lot when they're set up properly. So single spells, single keybinds, that's really the scope of this new change. This one does actually have an in-game option for toggling it too. It can be found in options, gameplay, interface, and then under combat. Remember that these changes are for the Dragonflight Alpha, so you won't be able to test any of them out on the retail servers, I'm afraid. I can see this being quite useful for a few different reasons. The main one is pure accessibility. If you're someone who has any problems with your hands or fingers, this can severely reduce the impact on your fingers and hands that some classes and their rotations can entail. Spamming the same key for your filler spells can get quite fatiguing in certain rotations, especially for some of the simpler classes where they don't see much variety in their spell usage. Imagine just being able to hold that key instead of spamming it all day long. It would drastically reduce your overall movement, which should create less stress on your joints. It might seem like a complete non-issue to some of us younger folks, but I can tell you right now that my mother-in-law will probably be very happy to hear this news, especially regarding her arcane mage. That arcane blast spam is no joke. The other major advantage this new option could give you is latency avoidance. If you play with higher ping, getting your spells to start casting at the right time usually involves a bit of spam. I know when I was playing on the NA realms while back in the UK, I would be spamming my shots all day just to make sure they actually started casting. Any downtime in between abilities is lost DPS after all, so you really want to minimise that downtime. Latency can make that hard sometimes, but if you can just hold the button and the spell is queued up immediately, that could have some good results for all you folks playing with higher ping. And then the last advantage here is that it just gives you more options. Maybe you prefer to play with the push and hold rather than the spam to cast. You're going to have to make a similar choice with your evokers by the way and how their empowered spells can be cast. Do you want to push and hold and then release to cast the spell or do you want to press the key once to start the wind up and then press the key again to cast the spell? It sounds like a very small difference but the way it plays is actually quite impactful. The key here though is that you get to choose how to play and how they work and now you can also make that choice for normal spells as well. Alright let's move on to the second new option, auto targeting. This one does not have a toggle option in the menu just yet which means we only have a console command to work with. If you're on the alpha you can type out slash console soft target enemy 3 to get this option turned on. 
Now what this does is quite interesting, and it seems to be an attempt to make World of Warcraft play a bit like some other titles with more action-oriented combat. When you approach a monster, you will soft target it, so you're not quite locked on as if you had clicked on it or pressed tab, but you are still sort of targeting it. If you walk near something with this turned on and the auto-target kicks in, you can then just start DPSing. You don't have to tab or click or anything, you can just go to town right away. This auto-target also follows the direction you're facing. So if you face a monster but turn away to a different target, the auto target will follow you, which is actually kind of cool, although it could probably get pretty frustrating. I think this feature in particular will be more useful for melee characters maybe. The range for auto target does seem to be shorter than many ranged characters max range, which they will typically be wanting to start an engagement from, but melee characters always want to be right up in their enemy's face, bashing or slashing things to pieces, so it's probably going to work much better for them. Now you can still use tab targeting or mouse targeting with this option enabled and that will lock on your target, so even if you start running around in circles and facing all over the place, your target won't change, so it's not like this option removes the ability to target what you want more specifically, it just gives you the option to not use those previous targeting features if you don't want to. This is another interesting accessibility change, it removes an action needed to target something, so that could be good for players who don't necessarily want to use their mouse to target all the time. Maybe if you're using your mouse to click on spells, you know, no judgement, you do you, you don't have to move your mouse up to the target on your screen and then back down to your bars to start clicking on abilities and then back and forth whenever you want to kill another monster, that could be an interesting change to play with. It also removes the need to really tab target at all, especially if you're only killing a couple of monsters at a time and you're doing something like open world content. When things get harder in dungeons or in a raid, you're going to want to be able to specifically target things for sure, but when it's just open world stuff, you can spam your spells and the auto target will pretty much just take care of it. But one playstyle I think this could help out a lot is playing WoW with a controller. Now I haven't tinkered around with it too much personally, but I bet having to press a key to tab target gets annoying when you're playing with a controller. This feature would take that requirement away, letting you spam your attacks instead of trying to target the right monster. All in all, it's an interesting option and I hope they expand upon it a little bit in the future. Maybe play with the sensitivity of the targeting, increase the range or customise the range, that sort of thing. And then moving on we have the last new option, and it might be the most interesting one, partly because it's going to allow you to move through content faster, and partly because it's something a lot of games already have. You can set an interact hotkey to immediately interact with the nearest interactable NPC. So it kind of combines the auto-targeting with the old interact keybind to make it so you can run up to an NPC and interact with them without having to actually target them at all, so you basically just don't have to click on them anymore. This has a few advantages, you don't have to use or move your mouse if you don't want to, and you can interact with key NPCs faster, whether you're picking up quests, handing in quests, interacting to get an NPC to do something or say something, you can just do that with a keybind instead. That should speed up your questing and levelling in general, but you know where else this is going to be great? For getting an NPC that those pesky players always try to stand on and cover, so you can't click on them. It hasn't been as bad recently with the forced dismounting near key NPCs, but players still find a way to sit on quest givers. Well, that won't be a problem anymore. No more slash target focus interact on mouse over workarounds. You can just walk up, press your interact key and be on your way. So it's as much of a troll repellent as it is an accessibility option, which is hilarious to me. I also think it brings WoW forward a little bit in terms of how you interact and interface with the game. Honestly, all of these new options do that to some degree, but being able to run up to a quest giver and press F, the default keybind is F, just in case you're curious, you can can change that in the keybind settings, but just pressing F gets you into the dialogue and you can move on from there. It's a small change, but I think players are really going to enjoy it, assuming it makes its way into the live game anyway. I also can't help but feel this option would make playing with a controller much easier as well, so not only do you not have to target monsters directly, you also don't have to target any friendly NPCs either. You basically just don't have to use your mouse much at all if you don't want to. This one's not just for NPCs though, you can also interact with objects like quest items, so you don't have to find the little areas you can click on if an object is bugged, or just a pain in the rear to hover over. You can just run up to the quest items you need, press your interact key, and be on your way. You can even do the same thing for profession nodes, so whether it's mining or herbing nodes, or even just skinning the mobs that you've killed, you can use the interact key in the same way. This is going to be great for all the ore and herb farmers out there, because you will almost literally never need to use your mouse. Fly around, find a node, run up, gather it, fly off, all without ever needing to use your mouse 
really. Not only does that make any sort of interacting easier, it also just makes it a lot faster. So if efficiency is your goal, these new options will be great for you. They could take this a bit further though. Right now the key only manages the first interaction for an NPC. If you want to click on a quest to pick it up or hand it in, you'll have to do that the good old fashioned way. I would be interested to see how this could evolve into allowing you to pick the first dialogue option and kind of go through the process of either talking to an NPC, opening up the first option, like opening a vendor's shop window, or fully picking up a quest by talking to an NPC, opening the quest dialogue and accepting the quest all with that same interact key. That might spawn some memes about spamming the F key to level in WoW, just like it did with a G key in Lost Ark, but it could allow you to progress through an NPC's interactions without needing to use your mouse at all. Now, I'm not sure what the end goal of these new options are, whether they want to just make it easier in general, give more options to the player base, make it more efficient for controllers, or just explore new ways you can interact with the game. But this first look shows a lot of promise for a wide variety of reasons, and they can definitely take it a lot further if that's what they have in mind. Now, there was one more change in this build that's sort of relevant because it's all about accessibility. When Dragon Riding was first announced, there were some players who were worried they simply wouldn't be able to use the feature. Whether it's because they couldn't see very well, can't control things very well, whatever the case, whatever the problems they foresee having with Dragon Riding, they may have been just addressed. In the new expansion, you can talk to one of the Dragonflight trainers in Valdraken, and you can enable passengers for yourself while dragon riding. What this does is it allows a group member to kind of hop on your dragon and follow along as a whelp. So you basically turn yourself into a two-seat amount with dragon riding added in. You can still do all your flips and twirls and wing flaps, corkscrews, super jets, you know, it's still dragon riding, except your companion is along for the ride as well. So if you think you'd struggle with dragon riding, and you typically have a friend who you can follow around or they help you to get to places, then they can do that again in Dragonflight. This does require you to have someone to help you in the first place, hopefully you do, but without that extra player this feature won't really help much sadly. Now perhaps an unintended consequence of this feature is that as long as you have a plus one buddy, you can actually almost endlessly use dragon riding. While you are a passenger, you regenerate the vigor points used for dragon riding. So if you take a passenger with you, get as far as you can with your vigor points, then swap over so you become the passenger and your friend flies their dragon, they can use all of their vigor, and by the time they have to land again, your vigor is probably at full and ready to go again, so you can just swap around. I don't know if dragon riding is intended to be strictly limited, but with the current implementation of this new feature, if you have a friend and are using the buddy system, you have almost zero limits with how far you can go or how high you can climb. If any of you managed to catch our live streams back in the day, you'll know that I don't really play without Nadara at all, so if we both turn on the buddy system, we will never run out of vigor. Probably not the intended result of this new addition, but it's definitely something that will get a lot of use or misuse if nothing changes by the time this goes live. Live. But that's all we know about these new options in the Dragonflight Alpha, what they are, how they work, and what they will let you do in the new expansion. What do you think from what you've seen so far? Can you see any obvious problems that any of these options could create later on down the line, or do you think they should be expanded upon to allow even more options for how we interact with the world? Can you think of any more uses for these new options that we didn't go over in the video? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to everyone subscribed on Twitch. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I'll see you next time.